Hey guys, Agrinidja here, and welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 8. In this episode, we smash redstone with obsidian. You'll see we got one piece of obsidian above bedrock, and in that gap, we're going to throw some redstone. And then we're going to left click that, build not one, but three thermal evaporation towers, dive really deep into power, and have a blast building multiple multi-block structures. So let's go get started. In today's episode, we're going to start getting into the power mod called Pawa. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, but it is a mod that I am not familiar with. I haven't ever used it before, and I do think it's fairly new. I have done some research and started playing with some of the basic items. So we can take a moment and look at those. And I've also set up some patterns so we can craft those on demand. And if we go look at the mod itself, you'll see that we have some of the dielectric paste, which if we look at the crafting recipe for that, we are making it from coal, clay balls, and blaze powder, which reminds me that I updated our mob spawner setup with three blaze and two endermen. So I got rid of the zombie skeleton and wither skeleton for now. I just figured we're gonna need a whole lot of blaze powder and we don't have quite enough. The other things that I've set up are the dielectric rods. There's two different ones. This dielectric casing, the basic capacitor, the tiny basic capacitor, an energizing rod and an energizing orb. And we'll get into these and what they do later as we get further into the mod. It does come with a manual, which we can take a quick peek at. And you'll see that it has types of generators to create power. It has ways to store and transfer it. It also has these functional blocks, which were pretty cool when I was researching these. And then there's items and materials. And if we look at this one more time, JEI, you can see there's not a whole lot of items for this this mod it's not real big but it's very powerful <laughs> fun intended <laughs> but when i was looking at this i noticed that we didn't have any of the custom uranium ore for power and it's called uraniite but going forward i'm just going to call it uranium because that's a weird word <laughs> and i struggle with saying it but i'm going to go collect some of this manually and then we're going to grab one of our digital miners and hopefully it's able to mine this in large quantities. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out. I was able to find a couple of the deep slate uh, uranium ores, and I did grab one of our digital miners. So let's head outside and see if this thing can mine it. I hope it's so, and I hope it's able to find quite a bit because it took me, a, ooh, it's dark. Let's go ahead and sleep real quick. It took me quite a while to find just those two. So I have a feeling this is not gonna be fun to gather. And we'll just set it up back here for now on our dock over here. Pop it right there. Let's get our chest and power block. Oop. Let's put it in the right spot. Set it to out. And then put our chest on the back. And we'll take a look at the config. We'll leave all these nether blocks because this is the one we've been using in the nether. I don't want to mess this up. And well, that, yes, I think that will work. <laughs> that, that only took, what, um, three minutes to figure out? <laughs> and let's see how many it finds. Oh, it found 300. I'll, I'll take that. Oh, it's also got found some glowstone down there. So, oh, no, 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 stop that. Oh, we may have made a boo-boo. Are we using, oh, we are, we're using glowstone. Uh, let's set this up somewhere else. I have the perfect spot for it. <laughs> um, I'll have to check. Hopefully we didn't mine anything up. But we're going to just go send it over here where I don't care what it mines up. We're going to stick it next to our excavator. In this same chunk. So let's pull up our chunk borders. It's already chunk loaded. We're going to take our power down, chest. See, it's not seeing anything here. 
but we definitely just mined something that we probably didn't want to it's not seeing any at all nothing So it doesn't look like this is going to be fun to mine. <laughs> so I'm going to look around and see if I can find a spot that has any. So I'm not sure if that's a rare ore or what, but I set a filter and we can take a quick peek for all six of the different types of uranium ores that are available. There's a poor, normal, and dense for both above zero and below zero. So the deep slate ones and also extended it to 256. So I was checking multiple hills multiple locations around our base and was finding nothing zero zero every time i checked and then i happened to check one of my buddies refined storage systems and he said and he had a little over a thousand so i asked him where you been mining at and this is where he's been mining so i don't know if it's because of this biome the height the y level what's going on but there's a whole bunch of it i'm sure you just saw just in this chunk there's almost 150. So we're going to let this run for a while. I'm going to get as much as I can from this area. I'm a little worried about the longevity and sustaining Urania uh, for the future, but we'll figure something out. That's a that's a problem for future Agro Ninja. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and get as much as I can so we can continue to progress. So now that we got a decent supply of the Urania ore built up, we're going to start diving into the mod a bit more. And unfortunately, we're going to have to do a little bit more than I planned on at our starter base because we're going to need to set some stuff up in order to get the pieces we need for our mega base. And if we take a quick peek, the first thing we're going to do is set up a process for getting the uranium from the uranium ore, which is this piece right here. And then we're going to get that from the energizer. And I don't know if I highlighted it, but there's actually six different types of uranium ore so you have the deep slate ore and then you have the stone ore and each one of those there's a pour a normal and a dense and as you can see here the normal gives you five the pour gives you three and the dense gives you ten these are obviously more rare second most rare and most common to find and we have a decent little supply built up of the ores so we have over a thousand of the stone ores and that will continue to go up because I will continue to mine. So what we're going to do is set up the energizing orb with three of the basic rods. So this is the second tier of rods above the starter ones. And we have a stack of ore and some stuff to hopefully automate this a bit with chess. I have done some testing, so this should work. <laughs> I say that lightly because I haven't fully tested it. I think for right now, we're just going to stick it right here. I don't have a whole lot of room left in the starter base, but we can uh, make it fit right here. We're just going to pop this wall out right here. We've got some advanced universal cable and we are, ooh, it messed up there. We're just going to connect that to the line running right here and run those right. Oh, actually I wanted to pull those back one. And then we're going to connect it up right there. And let's remove those. And then we're going to take our rods and turn those down and put one, two, and then three. And then we're going to put the orb itself right here. And I didn't think this through all the way due to chesting, but... Here, what, here's what, oh, I forgot about all this stuff. Let's, is there a way to, let's break this. There we go. And then move this chest right here for now. And let me sort my inventory so we don't lose anything. All right. Now let's take all of this out. Move it over here for now. I do at some point need to go through all this. I hate having random chests sitting around the base with the random stuff in it. All right, and I'll worry about cleaning this up later. I'm, I'm ready to test this. So we're going to get rid of this chest. I'm going to put a chest right here and right here. 
going to get rid of two more blocks. And then I'm going to need some more logistical transporter. But that's okay. We got we can do one side. And then where is my configurator? I'm going to set this one to export. We're going to test this by putting our ores in here. Should pull one out. It put it, it put oh, can it do more than one? Is it working? I can't tell if that's working or not. I waited around a while. I even added a couple more of these energizing rods, and we never could get the uranium from the ore. So I pulled everything out, and what I discovered is that this energizing orb can only accept one at a time, and it will quickly turn it into uranium. And I'll have some here in my inventory. I'll show you as an example. So if you put one in there, it zaps it right away. And if you put more than that, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. So we're going to pull those out. And my solution, I thought I got kind of creative with this, is I have a chest with a logistical sorter and a timer set to 60 ticks, which is three seconds. And this logistical sorter is set to pulse sensitive redstone and to auto eject one item. So a single item. So if I put this stack in this chest, you'll see that it'll pulse. Send one, charge, and then it's almost perfect. <laughs> and it'll sit there and craft them up. Now, if we look at JEI, there are several items here that the energizing orb is used to craft. And some of these do use multiple items. So what we're going to do now is look at a way to automate some of these that require more than one block. Because I know we're going to need these energized steel. Uh, we And some of these other things that use two blocks. This one's three. We'll probably might need some of these. So I'm going to look into that. But I do have manually. I wanted to show you guys. I forgot how to turn this off. Uh, I'll just pull everything out. Oh, it was almost done. We'll just let it finish. So we should be able to just manually put a piece of iron and gold in there. Yes, and it quickly made the energized steel, which we can get a quest for. So we'll take a quick peek at our quest book. We'll take the rewards for the energized steel. The reward for the... Oh, it finally gave us that. You know, I was odd. I was having issues getting that one earlier prepping for this episode. That was really weird. And we have that one as well. So we'll grab some of that. And we will take that quest. And that catches us up. So we're going to start prepping to craft some of this other stuff. And we're going to continue working on this power quest line. So I got a bit more creative with this setup. As I looked through the recipes, it didn't look like any input would require more than four items. So I've got four chests here with four logistical sorters all set up the same way. So they're redstone sensitive to pulse, auto eject, single item. And I have a redstone receiver on each one of these on the same channel set to this transmitter, which is setting below the timer, which I've increased to 100 ticks, which is roughly five seconds. Just because some things require different power requirements, and that should cover basically everything that we could craft for power, except the final item, which we will not be able to craft here, uh, and we might get into in the mega base. But... For now, this setup should work for anything we need, and we can go ahead and test it. So we'll go ahead and put our gold in here and our iron in this chest. And then we can flip this lever on because I have this timer redstone sensitive. So if I turn off the redstone, it should start working. There we go. <laughs> I was worried for a moment that it wouldn't go to work, and then it should zap it. And then we've set an inner chest over here so everything will get pulled into our refined storage system. If you take a look at inventory, I've got a few of the various items that we can run through this. So I'm going to work on crafting up some items, getting some more uranium from the ore, and get ready to go into a crafting sequence. We'll probably also set up some patterns as well, but let me get to work on that. So I did have to make a few minor adjustments to our setup. Once we started processing diamonds and emeralds, it clogged up because it wasn't enough processing time. 
So we added two seconds, so a total of 140 ticks on our timer. And we also upgraded all our rods to these hardened versions, and now it has no issues at all. We did take the time to process several of the resources from Pawa, so we have enough to get into the first major craft that I want to do. And that's going to be a reactor for our mega base. And this is what we're going to use to get started creating power for our mega base. And if you look under generators in the book, it's all the way at the end. So it's the top tier power of Pawa. And it's a three by four. So you need 36 blocks total. And once they're built correctly, it should automatically finish building itself. And the one I would like to build is the spirited. It's the second to highest level and it can generate 100,000 FE a tick and it can store 100 million FE, which is pretty impressive. This last one requires stuff that we don't have and would take some time to <laughs> gather and build. I mean, it's pretty significant, but we can do the spirited. And if we take a look at our refined storage system, you can see I've already added the patterns for all the components we're gonna need. So each one of the reactor tops, as well as their corresponding capacitors and the crystals needed. And if we look at the recipe, just to give you an idea of what it takes to craft this and what I've been working on, for every four spirited reactor components, it requires four of the previous one and four of the same level capacitor. So in this case, a spirited capacitor and one uranium. And if we take a further look, you can see that, you know, the sequence continues <laughs> all the way down to the basic one, or actually all the way down to the starter one, <laughs> which requires four uranium, four basic capacitor, tiny version, and one dielectric casing. And we're going to tell our system to craft 36 of these. This may take a little bit of time, but everything should be in our system in order to craft this. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. And then we're going to go watch our monitor for a moment. So as you can see, this is going to take some time. So we're going to let this run and we'll check on it here in just a moment. What I would like to do now is go into how we're going to store the power that we're about to start generating in large quantities. So the item that we're going to be using to store all the power about to be generating is an induction cell from Mechanism. And if you're not familiar with that, we'll take a quick look at it. So within Mechanism, the top tier way of storing power is with induction cells. And like most Mechanism blocks, there's a basic, advanced, elite, and an ultimate. And for each induction cell, you also need a provider block, and you also need to surround the whole setup with induction casing, and for every input or output, you need an induction port. And the one we're gonna be building is the advanced. And the advanced by itself can hold 25 billion FE a tick, and that's just incredible. Down the road, we'll be building the elite, which is 204 billion, and eventually the ultimate, which is 1.6 trillion FE. That's an incredible amount of power to store. So we're gonna be able to store with the advanced, like I pointed out, 25 billion FE, and we're gonna be able to sustain 100,000 FE a tick, hopefully. We'll have to see how much fuel that burns. <laughs> I would like to be able to run that 24 seven if needed. But before we can do that, if we take a look at our quest book, I built a few items here to finish up a few quests. And we're not gonna be using these at the moment, the wind generator, the gas burning generator, the pressurized reaction chamber, and the separator. But I needed to build these where I could unlock this advanced power generation quest line. And you can see the requirement is the gas burning generator. So that's why we did all that. So we'll go ahead and accept the quest line for that. Take our Giga counter. 
and we'll go ahead and accept all these while we're in here. And the reason I've done that is we're going to need to set up a thermal evaporation plant from mechanism so we can start to get lithium. And the reason we need lithium is because if we take a look at the basic induction cell, which is required to craft the higher tiered ones, it requires lithium dust. And this is a whole mechanism process chain in order to get this. So if we if we go backwards, we'll take a look at the chemical crystallizer first. So it takes lithium and turns it into lithium dust. And we get lithium from a decondensator, which is from liquid lithium. The so liquid lithium itself, I believe, is a gas. And this is a fluid. And we get liquid lithium from the thermal evaporation chamber which is created from brine and we get brine from another <laughs> thermal evaporation chamber from water so you can see this is a pretty significant sequence of events that we have to do just to get that lithium dust so we're going to work on setting all that up at our mega base along with our new reactor and setting up some of the interior and let's check on our craft to see if it's finished it does look like it's finished so we should be able to start making these other components because if we take a quick peek at mechanism you can see i've already set the crafts up for all of these so i'm going to work on crafting our thermal blocks that we need and setting it all up
Man, have we been busy, but that was a lot of fun. We got three different multi-block structures built here. To start with, we have three of the thermal evaporation towers, and these are fully maxed out at 18 blocks. There are four by four, and they need to be at least three blocks tall. And if you're not familiar with them, we can go into a little bit of detail on them. Each one requires at minimum two valves and one controller and they're used to produce two different fluids. So you get brine by processing water, and then you get liquid lithium by processing brine. <laughs> and we got a two to one ratio because down the road, we will need both brine and liquid lithium in large quantities. You can speed these up by adding heat. And we're doing that with these resistive heaters and pumping those with the thermodynamic conductors through two valves per tower. So you can see the other two back here where we also have established a new infinite water source and we're getting our water by using the electric pump from mechanism and each one of these has max speed and energy and if we get to the point where we need more water we can add some more pumps back here with some more ender tanks and we are using the ender tanks to move fluids around and we will probably start doing that more you also notice I'm not using anything but ultimate piping. <laughs> what can I say? It's our mega base. I want it to be all of the best stuff, <laughs> even if we don't need it. There's some ultimate universal cable, some ultimate thermodynamic piping, and then some ultimate mechanical pipe. Over here, we have our reactor. And I've already kind of set this up to test it. So you can see we're pulling water in on the right side as a coolant. And then over here is where we got some spare resources that go into the reactor. It is the spirited level like we talked about. And if we right click it, we can access the GUI. And you can see where the chest is keeping the redstone, coal, and urania maxed out. And it also, you can see where the water is getting pulled in. It is flipped off at the moment because it filled up very quickly. It's storing 100 million FE a tick. And it's generating around 65,000 FE a tick. The peak of this is supposed to be 100,000 FE a tick, but there's some probably some other variables that we need to look into to get it higher. I know that you can also add dry ice as an additional coolant, but we do not currently have that. So in the next episode, we'll probably look at a way of getting that in large quantities so we can feed it into our reactor once we actually start using this. But I wanted to go ahead and get it set up where we could show it to you guys. Also, ignore the flooring and the walls and <laughs> and all of the interior because it's it's just not something I have put any work into yet. We I was focused on getting these blocks up where we could use them. And up here is where we have our induction cell. And it's fully formed, although we don't have anything connected to it. So you can see that it is empty. And the reason it's empty is because there's one last mod I want to get into in this episode. We have done so much progress on our quest line and diving really deep and in getting into some pretty advanced stuff all in a single episode, but there's still one more thing that I want to get into. So let's head back to our starter base. So now that we're back over at our starter base, let's take a moment to go through our quest book because we got quite a bit knocked out today so far. And we'll start by looking at mechanisms. So the first thing is our thermal evaporation plant. We did build not one, but three of those. So we'll go ahead and accept the rewards for that. We also produce lithium, but we actually have not touched that yet. So let's pull some out of our system. And that'll give us one more quest. And we'll take the free 16. And we also have an induction matrix. So we, we may have to tear our multi-block apart to get the reward for that. We'll do that in a little bit. And that's all we've done with mechanism today. Although that in itself was a significant amount of work. In RF tools, I did go ahead and build this power cell. We're not using it. I just built it because, oh, we got one down here too where we built the timer. I just built it to knock out the quest. And in power, we have all kinds of quests to complete. So we have our blazing crystal, we'll accept that. Our neotic crystal, we'll accept that. 
our spirited crystal. And then we have a hardened capacitor, our blazing capacitor. We also have these, but I wasn't paying attention. We didn't actually touch them because we auto crafted them. So we'll, we don't have enough materials now. So in the future, when we need to make some more of these, I'll have to make sure we complete these soon. But we also got our reactor, which is a pretty big deal. But we've got all kinds of quests knocked out today. And we'll build some of this other stuff in upcoming episodes so we can finish this quest line out. What I want to do now is, well, <laughs> clean out my inventory. <laughs> so let's put this stuff away that we're not using. And then we are going to head down to Bedrock so we can crush some redstone. <laughs> It'll all make sense in one moment. So let's head down to Bedrock. Now that we're down at Bedrock, you'll see we got one piece of obsidian above Bedrock. And in that gap, we're going to throw some redstone. And then we're going to left click that. It's going to go boom. <laughs> and then we're going to collect 64 flux dust. And with that flux dust, we are going to get into our final mod for today. And that's Flux Networks. So let's go ahead and head back up to our base. Now that we have that Flux Dust, we're going to throw it into our refined storage system so we can craft with it. I've already got some stuff here ready to go. We're going to do a search for at Flux so we can see everything we can do. It's not a real big mod. It has a flux block, it has a flux plug, a flux point, a flux controller, some storage components, the flux dust, these flux cores, and the, the controllers. So we're gonna start out by making a whole bunch of these flux cores. I don't know how we'll need, but we're gonna make 64. We should have plenty of stuff to do that. And then we're going to do a controller because we will need a controller. It looks like we're going to need one, two, three, four, five of these flux blocks. But we'll build a couple of these real quick. And now we'll build that controller. And then to get started, we are going to. Pull. Let's see here, I'm trying to think. Let's do one of these, but we need to build a couple more flux blocks. We're gonna build one flux plug. Let's go ahead and build three, just to have a couple spares. And then we need three of these. I don't know if we'll need these, but we'll go ahead and craft them because you never know. So let's craft these. Don't look like you can actually uh, craft that one, but that's okay. So let's head back over to our mega base so we can get this hooked up. You probably see where I'm going with this. This is what we're going to use in our mega base to manage and move our power around. So we're, get we're getting away from these dimensional cells. Now that we're back over our mega base, let's go ahead and just temporarily put that right there and then right click it. We don't have any networks available, so we're gonna create a new network. And we're gonna call this first network Agro Ninja's Source. Well, this will be our our network for our power generation. We will set a password up on this. We don't want anybody using it. Hopefully I don't forget it. And we'll just set it as green. Now we're gonna exit out of that and on our reactor, receives energy. We want to do a plug. So we're going to attach a plug to that. 
we're going to set it to source. So now it's sending power into our source network. Transfer limit at set to 800,000, I believe is what that's set to. And we'll leave this alone. Let's do chunk loading, why not? No, we'll leave all the settings alone. I want it to be very basic. We need to wrap today's episode up. And on our induction sale, we can do a flux point, which is going to be receiving. And we'll just do two for looks. And we're going to set this to the same. So it should start sending power. Yeah, see, it's sending power in. And we'll do the same over here. So we have two different ones. You don't really need to. I just did that for visual looks. And then on the opposite sides, we're going to set two more. We're going to go back down to our controller. We're going to create a new network. And we're going to call this main. And we're going to set a password on it too. And we're going to set this one to blue. And the way I'm, the reason I'm doing this is we're separating our power generation from our power usage, and we're also forcing it to go through our induction sale. So all of our power being created will have a green tap going out, and it's going into here and going out into other things via the source. And that should be good to go. Now we can come down here. We'll just flip this bad boy back on. And you'll see it building up power. It can maintain around 65,000 FE a tick, although it is trending down. There. We'll let that run for a while. See there? Yeah. We're going to let that run and fill up our induction cell. We've got a Long ways to go before we get to 25 billion FE. But I think for today, we're gonna to go ahead and wrap it up. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I know I had a lot of fun taking a break from building for once and working on progressing through the mod pack and creating some really cool multi-blocks. We've got an incredible amount of power generation capabilities and storage now. <laughs> so I can't wait to go into the next episode or we're going to start working on our applied energistic system. If you did enjoy the episode, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. This is Agro Ninja, and that's a wrap.